Hello and welcome back to Business Matters of the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. That's probably how Europe feels about the gas it needs for heating purposes. Till Russia invaded Ukraine in February of this year, Russia met 30% of Europe's needs for gas and about 55% of Germany's. Now Europe is scrambling for gas. In this discussion, you'll get a taste of some economics and a little bit of geological science. Stay with me. Nord Stream 1 is an 11-year-old 1,200-kilometer pipeline that goes all the way from Russia under the Baltic Sea into Germany, carrying Russian gas into the European continent. One source of gas within Europe is in a not-so-little field in an area called Groningen in the Netherlands that could help, but that discussion is a non-starter. Here's why. Groningen has a gas field that began output in 1963. But beginning in the 1980s, the region witnessed numerous earthquakes, fortunately none that were large enough to cause significant damage, but enough to cause local buildings to develop cracks. Local protests were significant. The Dutch government listened to local residents and said it would shutter this field. The original date for closure was 2030. That was advanced to 2022. Earlier this month, Bloomberg put out a report indicating that if the authorities permitted, the additional supply from this field could more than make up for what Germany imported from Russia last year. What lies beneath the surface in this field is about 450 billion cubic meters or BCM worth of gas left to be extracted. The report quotes Shell PLC, which has a joint venture with ExxonMobil that operates this field. Shell had said that per year, this additional supply could go up to 50 BCM. Ironically, in February 2020, SNP Global Platts had a report in which it said that if this field were to be shuttered in 2022 as expected, the additional sourcing that would have had to be done elsewhere would have had to come from Russia. Well, gas extraction from this field is significantly lower now than compared to the past. The Dutch government still hasn't shuttered the field. It still wants to keep its options open. After all, EU member nations feel that Russia is using supply of gas as a war weapon. In a statement put out in June, the Dutch government had said the cabinet would like to be in a position to close down the Groningen gas field in 2023 as this is the only way to restore safety in Groningen and to reassure residents in the long run. However, the uncertain geopolitical developments have prompted the mining minister to refrain from permanently closing down any wells this year. That brings us to a geophysical question. Can gas and oil exploration or extraction of these hydrocarbons from underneath the Earth's surface cause earthquakes? Apparently, earthquakes can be caused by one of two reasons. Natural causes, as in the shifting of tectonic plates under the Earth's surface, or man-made or human-induced earthquakes, what is called induced seismicity. Examples of induced seismicity are when you know, we build dams in order to store water in reservoirs, mining, oil and gas exploration, and the like. To understand the science behind this further, the Hindus spoke to professors of both geophysics and geology at the IIT Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad. Professor Rajiv Upadhyay, Professor Saurabh Dattagupta and Professor Mohit Agarwal all agreed that man-made or induced earthquakes can be pretty damaging. Oil and gas may be found in pores of rocks resting underneath the Earth's surface. Each rock is subjected to horizontal and vertical stress. I mean, think of a rock, there may be rocks above it, rocks on its side, but untouched by mankind, they are in a state of equilibrium. But once you intervene in order to extract oil or gas, then the stresses on each of these rocks changes. And once stresses change, it may lead to move away from equilibrium and instability. The professors say that to enhance energy extraction in the case of shale rock, tight sandstones and some coal beds, Wastewater, sand and chemicals are injected into the earth at high pressure to create fractures in the rocks. This process called hydraulic fracturing or colloquially fracking helps improve the interconnectivity of the pores in order to extract oil and gas. In some cases, fluid is injected into pores connected to the fault and it may substantially increase the pore pressure within the fault to counteract the effective frictional forces. Water flooding through injection wells causes poor pressure in these hydrocarbon reservoirs to increase, leading to a decrease of effective normal stresses in reservoir rocks. Sometimes, this decrease of effective stresses causes existing natural fractures 
to shift towards the window of critically stressed fractures leading to induced seismicity. Fluid extraction as opposed to fluid injection causes an increase in net effective stresses and when supported by the geomechanics of the rock may lead to development of new faults and fractures. In the case of Groningen, fluid extraction has made the rocks contract because you know it has pores and with less and less oil and gas to hold because all of these has been extracted, the rocks tend to contract. As a result, the ground in Groningen has tended to subside over a period of time. Other parts of the world too have experienced earthquakes as a result of human intervention. Our own Maharashtra experienced the infamous Koina Nagar earthquake that claimed 177 lives and left more than 2200 injured. The dam built above the Koina River had water columns, the weight of which, and there was a general consensus among seismologists, that the weight of the water column substantially altered the stress of underlying faults leading to this earthquake. There are several places in the US, for example, where hydraulic fracturing has induced seismicity. The largest earthquake known to be induced by wastewater disposal was an earthquake of magnitude 5.8 that occurred near Pawnee, Oklahoma in 2016. As per the US Geological Survey, four earthquakes of magnitude of five or more have occurred in that state, Oklahoma, three of which occurred in 2016. In 2011, an earthquake of magnitude 5.3 was induced by fluid injection in Colorado. The professors are also cautious to point out that at every place that witnesses fluid extraction need not witness earthquakes. The geomechanical properties of the rock in question come into play and the reaction of stresses by rocks can be different at different places. Why are we in India talking about gas in the Netherlands and supply to Europe? Stay with me while we try and articulate the point. The domestic price of gas on an average in India is determined from four global indices. The US's Henry Hub, the UK's National Balancing Point, Canada's Alberta and Russian gas. Compared with pre-pandemic times, the average domestic price of gas in India has more than doubled going from 5.08 per mm BTU to about 11.62 now. Carriage Director of Rating Sudhir Kumar estimates that this is bound to go up again when the six-monthly reset for April to September of 2023 happens. At a time when global production has been declining, India's consumption has been rising. India consumed about 63.9 BCM or billion cubic meters of natural gas in FY22, which is about 3.1 BCM more than in the previous year. But we still relied on imports to make up almost 50% at about 30.7 BCM for the year ended March 2022. Meanwhile, global production is estimated to decline from 4,109 BCM in calendar 2021 to 4,089 BCM in 2022. The situation, Mr. Kumar says, will continue to remain challenging for the government unless it reviews the formula that is used to determine domestic gas prices. If that does not happen, the government will continue to bear the higher subsidies as it always has on the fertilizer sector and the LPG sector. In an earlier episode of Business Matters, you may recall that we discussed that the government's subsidy for fertilizers will touch 2.25 lakh crore this fiscal year ending March 2023 compared with 1.5 lakh crore in the previous fiscal. Hypothetically, should the supply in Groningen increase, for instance, will global prices of gas come down? Usha Ramachandra, an adjunct professor at the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore, says she doesn't see that happening. She says with the winter coming on, the demand for gas for heating purposes would be enormous. And anyway, because of the supply of, from Russia has been impacted into Europe, Europe is looking to West Asia and Northern Africa for supplies. And if at all there is any new supply within Europe, those supplies will first serve Europe before they look outside. Her view is that Europe has been making the shift to clean energy over these past few years, and European countries would not like to be perceived as increasing coal as a source of power. So she says that gas is the fuel of the day for heating purposes, for support to renewable energy integration, for hydrogen initiatives and clean transportation. She says if at all there could be any easing of prices in energy, it could be for coal because if Europe continues to give coal the cold shoulder, then those prices could ease. But she says we still have to wait and see how the winter in Europe behaves. If winter is really harsh, then there's no saying what will happen. Britain, she says, has already warned of 3-hour load shedding, unheard of since the 1970s. So if European countries can mop up gas 
wherever in the world they are, they certainly would. It is in this context that comments by our Finance Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman gained significance. She was in the US attending meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And she said gas becoming more unaffordable, several other countries were looking at coal as a source of power. India, of course, India depends on coal as a source of power for more than 50% of our electricity requirements. In her comments, Ms. Sitaraman cited Austria, for instance, looking at coal as a source of power. She also cited a news item that said that an old thermal plant in the UK was being refurbished to help generate electricity. Going back to our hypothetical question, will an increase in global supply of gas help ease global prices? Mr. Sudhir Kumar points to the fact that the recent increase in prices is a direct fallout of global supply constraints. So any increase in global supply will automatically help lessen these prices. So clearly there's no saying what the coming months will bring us. The situation remains fluid both on the geopolitical front as well as the global energy front. As the situation evolves, we'll keep you updated. Till the next episode of Business Matters, it's goodbye from us and have a lovely week ahead.